guys, it's Queen Deja, and in today's video, I will be reacting to episodes 5 to 7 of Awadi Managatsu. You're probably wondering why in the world I'm watching three episodes in one video instead of two in one. Well, it's still Tuesday for me. Um, on Monday, <coughs> excuse me, I got a message saying that I should watch the next episodes at with three because apparently it's going to end some weird way that I'm probably going to get confused by. And so they were like, hey, watch this episode just in case, yada, yada, yada. And I was like, okay. So yeah, just for this episode and maybe just anything else until I get told by the time either Patreons or anyone from next week gets to see this, we're just going to go ahead just for this week to watch three episodes. But other than that, let's go ahead and get started with episode five and three, two, one, go. Oh, really? We're, we're going to go back to her. Yeah, I think so, too. Mm -hmm. Honestly, the answer will be mysterious as well. Probably a big ass fool. He's a big ass fool because I'm sure he is. <laughs> Uh, probably. Yeah. So yeah, what I said from last, like I'm still going to throw away my little swim theory. I just think it's just one person and no one else. I cannot believe that the person who voices her is fucking Momo from My Hero. Like I was expecting someone. I don't know. I was thinking like it was maybe. Annie from my, uh, not my hero, <laughs> but she's fucking out of me too. Like, what the fuck? Out of anyone. I wasn't thinking out of me, but she's a fucking range. Like, oh my god, like, bitch, no. I mean, she's probably up there with, um, fucking Mamaru, because, I mean, like, her range, holy shit. I mean, well, Mamaru, who played freaking Light and Death Note and a whole bunch of other comics roles, that man got a fucking range, so holy fucking shit. But, bruh, <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't be, no, I wouldn't even be surprised if, like, another voice actor, like, is in this damn show. Because, I mean, this show is literally, like, all the biggest voice actors ever for so many fucking years. Like, goddamn, because they got too many goddamn voice actors in it, but it's such a good show. Well, I mean, she a detective. Detectives tell people. Duh.
the feels that I'm getting to see these two together in like a long amount of time. Oh my god. Yeah, she's smart as fuck. You gotta love how he's. <laughs> uh, that's just two people in a nutshell. People who like to walk and exercise, and people who don't. <laughs> I mean, who knows? <clears throat> you? Mm hmm I mean, even though he can protect himself, but... Oh, wait, but hold on. Let's not split up. You, you know things happen when people split up, but okay, I mean, this ain't no horror anime or some shit, so nothing bad ain't gonna happen. Your girlfriend. Because remember, she ain't got a home. When the fuck did you promise that? They had to do it in the previous episodes. <clears throat> But I don't wait, 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 wait. Remember, because she's just like her uncle in a way. And she's also like Heike. 
fucking lying about shit. So you can't always really trust them. Like, oh my god. I hate when I have something stuck in my throat. Yeah, and then Sanjay Hada is absent as well too, which I mean, <clears throat> something about that's already weird, but it's okay. No, I'm guessing she possibly lives on her own. Yeah, she has been. Because I'm guessing if she lived with her aunt or her uncle, maybe her aunt and uncle would rat her out to her parents and her parents would just want to take her back. Okay, so why don't you just go? She right. She right about that shit. <laughs> of course, see, it'd be so much better to have her go with you instead of you going alone. And if Central Hada finds out you go by yourself, that girl gonna kill you. Yeah, it's good. <clears throat> yeah, because like I said, you go by yourself, your girlfriend probably gonna kill you. Might as well just let her. Hey, Hanagawa. Why, though? <laughs> you don't want to hurt a feeling. The 
the just friends kind. True. I mean, but y'all would still be considered acquaintances, but no, I would still consider y'all friends and all that. Like. I'm like, honestly scared as fuck right now. I mean, having these two. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And she ended up listening to his story when he needed someone to listen to him. And you go see your girlfriend. Wait, huh? But... Well, yeah, I don't think any girl would like it if their boyfriend went to someone else's house alone. Just to, like that, I'm just saying, even though. But still. They ain't girlfriend, they just friends. I just say boyfriend or girlfriend. Oh my god. Hmm. 
Oh, Jesus Christ. How about you go with neither? But I mean, could you still just solve things? Well, he goes with Hanagawa. <laughs> well, that settles it. <laughs> And then she'll be even more pissed at you. Do you really want that? Yeah, of course. We all know that. <laughs> <laughs> I 
And of course, you're not going to show anything. We got to wait till episode six to find out the conversation between these two. What all is going to happen when he goes into our apartment? Okay. What the fuck? I, you know, I'm honestly glad that he chose Hanakawa. Not for the bulls part thing, but just because of the fact that she is intelligent and that he could really use her help. I get Oshinu's needs wants to help too, but I felt like, yeah, if he still would have chose Hanakawa, I thought that she would have still done some digging of her own and just would have, like, they would have had a phone call or he would have took her out to their little sushi date and then they would have just discussed everything there. That would have been good for them. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I mean, honestly, the chills I was getting to both having Hanagawa and Oshino's niece just together and having a conversation like that. Like, uh, the last time I got, got like, chills like that, I think it was just any time with Sanjo Hada, like, any person who she's around and she just feels a little threatened and she's got to do whatever you got to do. Like, hey, get a knife out, get some staples, <laughs> stuff like that, because that's such a hot for you. You, you do what you gotta do, but I don't know. I'm honestly a little afraid to see what might happen next between Okura and Agaragi once he goes into the apartment. We know that she's in her pajamas. I hope this conversation between the two of them and him learning more about the truth and everything, it, it's settled. It's not too forced, but who knows? I mean, dead ass, we ain't gonna wait, and we ain't gonna know until the next episode, which I'm gonna watch in a couple of seconds, but I mean, honestly, this was a really good episode. But then they still got to go talk to Central Hada and deal with why she wasn't at school today. And I feel like Central Hada, I don't know. Sometimes when I think about my favorite character, my best girl, my other best girl, Central Hada, I, I feel like sometimes she knows what Akaragi is doing. And especially with the fact is that he was going to go by himself. I feel like she probably knows that shit. Or anything, he gonna get his ass chewed. I don't know. I mean, I feel like Sandra Hada is that type of girl who. No, you know. Let me take that back. I don't think Sandra Hada is the typical girlfriend who is like, I want to know where the fuck you are, like every single minute of your fucking day. That's kind of like the girl from um, the pink hair girl from that diary series. I've, I've seen it before, but I just don't remember the fucking name. It's been a long time since I fucking watched it, and that shit skips fuck. But she's. That's, that's like another level of crazy but I mean there are some girls who yeah even in the real world want to know where the fuck you are at every single moment of the time which is crazy as fuck and then there are girls like me where I'm just like hey you know it, it is what it is yeah I want to know where you are and stuff I want to know you're, if you're okay but I'm not gonna be that type of bitch who's calling you <laughs> <laughs> every five to ten seconds or ten minutes i think pe women or even men who do that they are a little too attached to their significant other it's only like yeah if it's only been maybe a couple of hours or you haven't been able to talk to them all day i get that but if you're like every single freaking minute of the goddamn day every fucking week calling them him or her to know everything that's when you kind of need to take a step back and like rethink your life and rethink the way you're going into your relationships with someone else so yeah calm the fuck down but yeah go ahead and pause the video and i'll see you guys in one second for episode six okay episode six and three two one go god damn it it's like the smallest fucking captions in the world Kind of figure that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I mean, when you were younger, it either looked like you were either in middle school or still in elementary school. Oh my god! Oh. It's been a while since we've seen you, child. Like, oh my god, you are normal. But this was before, see, no, we're like, oh my god, it's just complicated. But still, like, baby, she's okay.
Mm-hmm. Of course not, because you know you're a kid and you can't really know everything, but. Mm-hmm. Because they must have found out that they were abusing her. Hmm. Because she's scared. Girl, oh, what? Oh, hey, but why would you want to go back now? I don't think she's the type of child who, you know, is okay with her parents abusing her like that. But it, it's like how um, I can compare this to like two shows right now Fire Force and My Hero. With both, um, Erichan and Lisa, with their significant people who have whole, have that power held over them, it seems like it's something like that with her family. The abusement and the shit that she's dealt with for such a long time. And to finally be away from them. But it's just that stuff, that power and everything that's hold, that's held over her because of her abusers. She had no other choice to go back. It could be that or it could be something completely different. I don't know. It's just a guess. I do know somebody's going to come up and say something. If they don't say it on Patreon, it is going to come out on Monday when this comes out next week. But who knows? I mean... It's just a logical guess because think about someone who's in an abusive relationship or an abusive family or something like that. You still have that longing to want to stay with that person or whoever because you love them and you care about them no matter what, even though they're still hurting you. But who knows? That is just, that's the biggest question. Why would you go back? Because any normal person would be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah, but that bruise on your face. Gee, where would you get that from? Please don't tell me she's abusing herself. Oh, okay. Because blood mm, healed. Yeah, see, we all knew this conversation between these two was not going to go well. This is why he should not go.
Thank God, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's your cat line for you. That's all. After that, you don't even have to listen to him if you don't want to. But just hear him out right now. We know. I get that. Of course. Okay, I, I get that. But your father did it more. Jesus. Of course. Um, I'm definitely because she still would be afraid. Like, anytime you could come get her. She had to be going mad at the same time. There's a butt coming, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And so you've been alone ever since. Hey, Chris. Nothing. Oh, they could be dead. Yeah, and I don't think she wanted to have all those memories in there of her. Instead of being dirty. But of course people are going to pity you for that no matter what. Uh, okay. <laughs> Not to be rude. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How did she get out? I mean, was the, no, did the, the floorboards maybe, if it was wood. Does she have a key? Okay, so you have a key. Yeah. 
and you needed to see filth and everything, so that's why. Okay, I get that. Mm -hmm. I guess sometimes you can. Mm -hmm. But it's not always all his fault. All his fault. Your family, the things that you've chosen and done, it's equally everybody. But no, she had you. Mm. I get that. Then what do you want? Mm -hmm. Good job. Might as well go for business and daughter. Mm -mm, of course.
But it ain't gonna be that easy to find her mom, right? I mean, you ain't gonna tell me it's going to. It's gonna take the help with Oshino's knees, maybe Central Hara, and maybe a couple of other people. I don't know. I wouldn't be even surprised if fucking Mayue comes back up in this bitch because you know I miss my other child as well. It's been a while since we've seen Mayue, but I don't know. I mean. I will say this about Okura. Like, she has a wall built around herself. And especially with the fact that Agaragi is saying, like, you know, you can hate the world, yada, 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 shit like that, but it's not heavy, nor this. You can love yourself and almost change yourself for the better for you to look at the world and people a little bit differently. Kind of breaking your wall down. When you meet someone who has gone through a troubled past, and you want to know everything about it so that you can give them advice for them to, you know, look at the world and themselves and other people in a different light. Because I've had to do that for somebody. I don't really know if they kind of really look at the world and themselves a little bit differently. Because the last time I talked to this person was uh, last Friday. Last Friday. And she's still having a little struggles with it. But, um, and then my mom and I think a certain type of thing, but I can't really discuss that at this point. But it's just, it, it, it's it's a constant battle with yourself. And that's what she has. She's, it, it, she's really struggling with it to the point where she's like, it, to me, I'm thinking like, yeah, you need some serious fucking help. But she, in a way, she kind of said that, but it's like, what else can I do? And who else can I talk to if you've done this, that, and the third, no matter what the hell you've done? And sometimes you're at, you know, the final moments of your life where you're trying to think about what the hell can I do before I either hurt myself or others. She just, she seemed really from the last few minutes of this episode, except the last few minutes of this episode, that's what I mean, like hella depressed and every word that she was saying almost is like punching you in the face and you're just like, oh my God, like this girl has been through some shit, even with the first two the, not even the first two, the first four fucking episodes of this series, of this season, really, like, learning more about her backstory, you just want more and more, like, sad for this girl, and you want her to get her life around, I mean, it's like that kind of really for every single damn girl of this series, as I've said in the past, where you relate to them in some sort of way, and you can see, um, essentially why they are, when, uh, why they are, who they are, and then how they can turn around from it and make it be, you know, be, like, make it anew in a way. And then something else happens in another season that usually deals with them, and you're trying to see how they can deal with this with or without Agaragi, because I still love the fact that, they, you know, they did almost, like, a whole couple of seasons, a whole season where Agaragi was like, you know, no show, but the girls were doing it on their own without his help but i do love the fact that agaragi is coming back and he is our still our main character once again instead of going back and forth for so many different girls and shit like that but he's still helping and that's the one thing that oshino you know wanted him to do after oshino left and sometimes i still wish he could you know surprisingly just come back out of nowhere and be like hey i'm here to help what else do you need help with but because of the fact that he's not here anymore at the end of the day it always um not belongs, falls onto Agaragi's Agaragi hands. He's the only one that can deal with these situations and help these girls or, you know, if there's ever another guy in this series, but I don't think that's going to happen because the fact is we're so somewhat close to the end of the show. But yeah, I mean, there are times, especially where I think when I, at the beginning of the show, where I kind of thought that Agaragi, and he has gotten in trouble and he has figured it out on his own, um, because at first I was thinking, I was like, maybe Akaraki is going to be, like, the only character in the show that's never really going to get in some deep, deep, bad shit. 
<laughs> but um, honestly, that kind of changed my <laughs> experience when the movies came out. But yeah, I mean, he's a good friend and he's even there for people who don't even give a shit about him and don't even like him. But no matter what, he's just going to take whatever, whatever he can get and just do whatever he can in his power. All right, go ahead and pause the video and I will see you guys in one second for episode seven. Okay, dokie. Episode seven in three, damn it, in three, two, one, go. There we go. Mm-hmm. How the hell she got out of there? That too. Because you know everything. Really, Cody? Come here. <laughs> Back up, please. I don't need you to get hurt. Back. 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 Go, go lay down. Heheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheh
Of course. Oh, your hair. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Well, good. Mm-hmm. Of course. is yeah i already thought that
It's possible. Maybe. I mean, because they're having kids that have killed their, their parents, but... You know, they could, she could be still hiding under them all the time. Typically, the news or something would have possibly said something about it. And died. No, of course not. Yeah, if you had to act like an adult at that age. But yeah, for dying. That too. Had to. She dying. Mm -hmm. God, it's horrible. So depressed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she doesn't need to know this. Like, if she's told this, who knows what she would possibly do to herself, others? She would possibly kill herself.
Oh, Christ. But... Why do I feel like this is the last episode in her arc? Mm. Gotta be there for him. Exactly. Listen to her. Blame me for everything. Of course. Yeah, it'd be better for you to have a new start. And when you leave, she's going to come back. Maybe. Okay.
my own? Or, no, this is, this is the same fucking area. She's always been around every single time. Bitch. Because you would have a love for him. Well, yeah, she runs like an old with hurricane. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Of course, I would have been so much better if you would have showed that, but it was just almost like a final goodbye for her. Okay, so this was her last episode. Honestly, I'm glad I was able to watch all three episodes, but final thoughts on Oprah's art. Honestly, I think she was a very interesting character. She might have to be on my favorite list now. For girls, I really wasn't expecting her past to be that fucking dark. I was expecting a lot of dark things, but not everything from these seven episodes. I mean, I love the fact that first, we kind of started on Oshino's knees, and I really thought that this may be seven, eight, how many of our episodes we were going to go for. I think this length is like 12, 12 13, I don't really remember. Um, I kept thinking, overall, this whole freaking arc was going to be about her. But no, it was like just the first two episodes. 
But it was just really a relationship from the past that Agaragi was slowly but surely starting to remember. And it was an interesting arc to do it. I mean, I, I was thinking, I didn't, I had no clue what this arc was going to be about. Only really from seeing clues in the opening and watching a credulous opening with no fucking words in it. And you're like sitting here and you're looking at it. And you're wondering what the fuck. Because I had only seen the very first opening with o- Ocean of Knees until i want to say last week when i got to see the other two well not the other one the last um opening for okra and just thinking like, okay so it's a twin thing yada, yada yada but then no i mean god she's such an interesting character and i wish her well whatever whatever the hell is going to happen to enter her life next but she gets to go somewhere else she gets to start anew instead of coming back to a town where she was you know she recently moved back to and to still deal with the same things that she was dealing with for such a long time. When you come into a new town or whatever, you get to reinvent yourself. It's kind of almost the same time when you're returning to a new town because it's been such, not a new town, um, a former town. You live there for such a long time and then you move somewhere else and then you come back to it. It's not always the same. As someone who used to be a former military brat and having to move from place to place every so years and not many months, And living, you know, here in Florida for, like, the time that I was born to, like, third grade. And then moving moving back and forth between Maryland and Florida. And then moving to Nebraska and living in Nebraska for six years. And that is, like, my second home away from home. And then coming back to Florida and thinking that everything that I was going to have when I left was going to be the same. And honestly, it wasn't. I can deal with that. And even now, today in 2020, you know... Things that, um, there's a lot of things that have changed my life. Some things for the good and some things for the bad. And you just never know. But because of the fact that she's going to be in a new place, she can reinvent herself. And she can change herself for the better. She can learn to love herself and everything else a lot more. And honestly, I kind of wish maybe later on in this show, even though this is the last season, um, I don't know if she would want to really still be in contact with Agaragi. I hope in some way, shape, or form she could. But who knows? If there's ever a moment where she texts him or he texts her, I would like to see that. I think that it would be really great for the show and to still learn more about her character, even though she's not in the show anymore. But I still kind of feel like, and I've said this in the past, typically when we're done with a girl's arc, they're not really in the show anymore or they're in the show, but it's just the focus isn't really typically on them. I still like she's still going to be in the show. She'll maybe like once in a blue moon make an appearance. I'm not 100% sure, but who knows? Other than that, guys, that is my reaction view towards episodes 5 to 7 of Owari oh, got today. If you guys enjoyed it, please give me a like. It really helps me out. Also, subscribe to my channel. I make videos every single day. Join the Marshall Squad, and of course, I will see you guys officially all next Friday for Patreons, and next Monday for everybody else for episodes 9 and, no, 8 and 9. (laughs) Bye, guys.